This is News 8 This Morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to your Monday. Yeah, you wake up here, you're going to smell that kind of metallic, metal, smoky smell when you're leaving the house here. That's from the USS Bonham Richard, that firefight continuing in this morning here, Stella. Yeah, it's 24 hours later, so let's go ahead and, and get right into your headlines this morning. We begin with this. We're expecting a long day ahead for these firefighters. They're continuing to fight that fire on board the USS Bonham Richard. We have team coverage for you this morning, including the lingering concerns about the air quality. Our News 8's Chris Crow is live from the Naval Medical Center with more on the victims and the background of the ship. But first, let's get to Netta Rampour, who's live at Naval Base San Diego with the very latest on the investigation. Good morning, Netta. Good morning. You know, it's incredible to see how they are taking on this defensive attack to try to put out this fire. But really, nearly 24 hours later, it is still burning. And you can certainly see uh, the fire attack going on right here from the land, from the air. We've seen several helicopters making drops. They're getting water right there from the San Diego Bay dumping it onto the USS Bonham Richard. In fact, I uh, just spoke with a Navy veteran who describes really this firefight and the way they have to do it is while they're pouring all of that water onto the ship, they also have to get rid of the water that would be flooding in some of the areas because they obviously don't want this carrier to become overwhelmed with too much water. So there's a stream of water coming out of the ship as well. Of course, they're using the bay for all of this to be able to dump that water on. Video from 8.30 yesterday when all of this uh, started uh, throughout the day, you can see really such a tough battle for these firefighters. About 160 sailors were on board at the time. Thankfully, all of them made it out alive. Chris Grow will have a lot more on that. Now, the Bonham Richard is an amphibious assault ship. It's home ported right here in San Diego and has a crew of about a thousand sailors. But since it's undergoing maintenance, less than 20% of the crew on board when this started, people could see thick black smoke for miles. It was a three alarm fire and it appears the fire started in the lower portion of the ship. That's where marine equipment is stored and they call it an uh, area where they have a lot of birthing equipment. In fact, it's a uh, it's called the. Uh, sorry, they. They are telling us, uh, according to the Navy Times, I should say, it's known as the Deep V. It's a huge open area where you store a lot of equipment. So that's the dark smoke that you see. According to the Navy Times, there was nothing toxic in the ship, uh, but there's fuel at the very, very bottom of the ship. And they do that on purpose to make sure if there is a fire, it doesn't obviously get down. So their key is really keeping that smoke above, reaching the higher decks instead of going down below. I got on closer to the base, I saw all this black smoke coming from the shipyard. I just had concern for the ship and the sailors. I mean, people just in shock. I kept seeing different ambulances coming through. Now, San Diego Fire took images as firefighters worked from the ground. A civilian contractor also showing News 8 the smoky scene inside before they took up defensive positions on land. Now, around 1 o'clock yesterday, the USS Fitzgerald shifted berths, had to go to a pier farther away from this fire. The USS Russell also moved about 30 minutes later. The chief of naval operations saying this is a terrible tragedy. Obviously, this, these types of carriers can cost hundreds of millions of dollars. And if you are back here live, if we can see just now another airdrop was made from one of the helicopters. It's now hidden in the smoke, uh, but really you can see how much smoke is coming out of this ship. In fact, it's getting darker, uh, you know, as it continues to burn. So even in the past 10 minutes, we're starting to see even more smoke coming out of it. And, you know, it's a lot of birthing equipment. That's where uh, the sailors typically would live. That's where they would sleep. That's where they have a lot of their items. And those are the areas uh, that are currently burning. And that's one of the reasons why you see uh, so much smoke coming up. So again, they're taking this all as a defensive approach. Uh, you can see, you know, they have to stay on land and from the helicopters to battle it. They don't want anyone to walk on that carrier. It's just too hot. That steel can be hundreds of degrees. Uh, it can melt their boots, uh, if, and if not worse. And uh, we can see the smoke, of course, from here. We smelt it coming in. Heather has more on the air quality that's certainly going to impact a lot of people throughout San Diego. 
All right, Netta, thank you so much. And let's talk about that air quality here for a moment. Exactly what we're experiencing out there now. The Air Pollution Control, Control District gave us this information that because of the fire on the USS Bonhomme Richard, we have elevated levels of PM 2.5. So exactly what is that? Well, I looked into it so I could share some information for you this morning. That means air elevated levels of atmospheric particulate matter up to 2.5 micrometers. So that's about 100 times thinner than a human hair. But when we see elevated levels of PM 2.5, that's the result of burning fuel or chemical reactions in the atmosphere. So that can be unhealthy for people who are sensitive to smoke out there. So maybe if you're asthmatic, you might already have a lung problem. This is the time then you want to phys limit physical activity outdoors where you're smelling the smoke and stay inside to limit exposure. The good news is not nearly as hot as it was over the weekend. So if you want to keep your window closed, maybe put some fans around the house that might help to keep you just a tad cooler. As far as the winds are concerned, yesterday we had that southerly flow, meaning winds blowing from the south to the north right along the coastline. We're still noticing a little bit of that here this morning still, and now we're going to add some of the westerly mix uh, into it for today. So that means we could start to smell that fire, the smoke from it in other locations across the county. We do have people reported uh, smelling smoke in La Mesa all the way up north in the Rancher Bernardo and Poway area smelling more of a chemical smell out there. So if you are sensitive to that type of thing, you are asked to keep your windows closed today and limit physical activity outside. More on your forecast coming up, but first I'll send it back to you. Heather, thank you. And we are continuing to cover all angles of the fire. That includes those hospitalized during the firefight, as well as the history of this ship. News 8's Chris Groh is live at Balboa Naval Medical Center this morning with that part of the story. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Stella, and we just got clarification from the Navy. It does appear now that originally we had those 13 sailors, two federal firefighters hospitalized in stable condition. Well, eight of those sailors have been discharged as well as those two federal firefighters. So only five sailors remain in the hospital. Again, they are in stable condition. Now, as for the history of the ship, it has served a number of missions since it was commissioned in 1998 serving not only uh, for the Pacific, uh, the Southwest Pacific, uh, but also across in the Middle East. The 847 foot ship has more than 1000 sailors on board and more than 100 officers. It can be used in a variety of situations from humanitarian service to defending America overseas. In fact, it was used in Operation Iraqi Freedom, where in January of 2003, it delivered more than 1000 Marines just miles off the coast of Kuwait. It was also one of two aircraft carriers to launch strike aircraft missions in Iraq. It also conducted search and rescue missions across the South Pacific over its time, like when it helped during the 2014 ferry disaster in South Korea. It also provided humanitarian relief after Japan's Kumamoto earthquakes two years later. And the Banal Richard has also won the Navy Battle Effectiveness Award eight times in its history. It's also been in several movies, including uh, the Hollywood blockbuster Battleship as well. So again, we'll continue to check on the status of those sailors that have been admitted to those local hospitals, as well as continuing to update family members on their status. You can go to our website, CBS8.com, click on the help button. There's a phone number there where you can contact uh, the Navy directly uh, give the name of your loved one that serves aboard the ship to see if they're one of those five that have been admitted. Eric Stella. And of course, stay with CBS 8 updates to keep uh, as they keep coming in on the ship fire. Head to CBS 8.com or, of course, our News 8 app. And now to an update on the coronavirus in the county. San Diego County now has at least 20,000 positive cases. County officials report 558 new cases out of just over 8,500 tests, a positive rate of around 7%. That brings total cases to 19,929. For perspective, the county saw its 10,000th case on June 17th. Total infections doubling less than a month. Two new outbreaks were reported, bringing the total to 18, well above the trigger of seven. Fortunately, no new deaths were reported. Time now for your morning rush. Starting today, UC San Diego will begin a clinical trial to look into the safety and effectiveness of a plasma treatment to prevent COVID-19. The trial is part of a larger national effort approved by the FDA. Researchers will collect 
isolate, process, and then begin testing. So if you want to apply, we have put more information on our website, cbsa.com. Just click on that help button. Another jockey tests positive for coronavirus in Del Mar. Del Mar Thoroughbred Club officials confirmed Flavian Pratt tested positive for COVID-19 yesterday following a trip to Kentucky. He was tested at Scripps Clinic in La Jolla. He was originally named to compete this Sunday, but was removed from all races. Instead, he will quarantine at his home for at least 10 days. Police are still looking for a person of interest in a deadly shooting in the Otay Mesa area over the weekend. 31-year-old Jeremiah Horton, who changed his name to Justice Love Peace, is considered armed and dangerous. The shooting happened on Ebersole Drive, south of Palm Avenue yesterday morning. Officers found two women with gunshot wounds at the home. One woman died at the scene. The other later died at the hospital. A six-month-old baby also went missing from the home, but was later found. Horton is believed to be the child's father. In the next hour, we will hear from officers on the search. And new this morning, actress Kelly Preston has died after a private battle with breast cancer. Her husband and fellow actor John Travolta shared the news on Instagram. Preston was known for her roles in films like Jerry Maguire and Twins. She had been undergoing treatment for cancer for the past two years. She was just 57 years old, so young. Still to come, a new request is expected for former special counsel Robert Mueller to testify again. The details behind why. And the search continues this morning for former actress, uh, Glee actress, Naya Rivera, the latest as the investigation enters into its sixth day. Plus, big changes coming to one NFL team as it's expected to change its name. Those stories and more next.